All right, I'm back. So um, last episode with the E34, um, I talked about how we got the motor in, all types of stuff like CAD and Aaron and all that type of stuff of getting this engine to sit in this car. But like I said in that video, there's still like a billion other things to do on this car. So we're going to start trying to work on getting some of this stuff crossed off the to-do list. And just like that, we have an LS2 powered BMW E34. All right, I'm back. So uh, I know it's been a minute since I've done like actual car stuff, but we're gonna work on the E34. Um, basically, like what I'm trying to do is like anytime I'm working on the cars, I might try to start live streaming. So right now, like the rig that I have set up, um, I have the GoPro right here, and then up here I have you guys on a phone. So I I, I know this is kind of like a new thing for you guys because uh, according to YouTube. None of my audience really watches live streams, but like, I guess that's not really that big of a deal <laughs> because um, according to YouTube, none of my audience watches my videos anyway. Yeah. So this is probably just gonna be me in the garage talking to myself for like an hour or so. So I, I guess my next thing is um, we really actually like for real need to get this motor bolted down. Um, this motor is kind of like sitting on engine mounts kind of but like they're not like fully bolted in. I also kind of need to see where the wiring harness is gonna lay out in this car. I need to figure out where the shifter is gonna be. So there's lots of like little things that need to happen um, between like the last video that I made and actually driving. Yeah, and I guess I should probably explain what happened in the last video because like only 40 people watched it. As everybody who's followed this channel knows, uh, it's not as straightforward as just taking a LS motor and then just putting it in an E34. Uh, the problem that I had was pretty much any time I tried to approach a company about it, they were always like, well, have you considered just like selling the car <laughs> and then just having a different car? How about new? You crazy d So um, for those of you who weren't here for the whole saga, basically what I ended up doing was I bought a 3D scanner to scan this whole engine bay, scan the drivetrain, made engine mounts in CAD, and then one of my friends who's a fabricator put these engine mounts together and the motor's kind of sitting in here. As you can see, the, the stand is still holding it. I actually like need to permanently get the engine mounts on here. So if you guys wanted to know what like the final engine mount looked like, so this is it. This is just basically made out of, you know, well not cast iron, but steel. These flat parts, like I said in the uh, full video, they came from Sin Cut Sin. Um, and then basically Aaron came, he measured, just made sure all of my CAD math made sense because uh, I'm an amateur, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> so he needed to just make sure that like everything I did made sense to like the alignment of where the drive shaft has to be and everything and it ended up working out. So um, the next thing that we're going to try to do is I'm gonna have to lift the motor up a little bit and then we can get these bolted to the side of the motor. So this is kind of where I was talking about things get tight. If you look at like how close the steering box is to this mount, there's literally no room. So when this whole engine was out, I basically scanned everything and I was able to see that I was going to touch with the engine mount. But um, through the software, I was able to like come up with a design that like just barely clears it. We have technology. <laughs> And, um, and then obviously when Aaron picked what tube we're using, we barely are able to pass it. There we go. Oh, what is it caught on now? Oh, nothing. All right, so I think for the first time ever, we're ready to sit the motor down in the car like under its own weight. So I just gotta make sure it goes down square, which is gonna be a challenge, but. Okay, go, go back. Okay, there, there's the right side. Oh, and the left side's in, yeah! So yeah, we have a Chevy LS engine 
sitting in the engine bay of a BMW E34. So um, I guess the next step is to kind of line up where everything is. We now need to see where the wiring is going to go. Yeah. So this guy here is the ECU or the PCM that came with this engine. This is a blue green or people say it's a blue green ECU because one of the connectors is blue. The other one is green. The problem with running this in my E34 is basically that this car is a drive by cable car, but because you have a cable throttle and you're trying to find idle, there's a small stepper motor that opens up a bypass around the throttle blade. And then that helps the engine find idle. This guy here does not have the hardware to drive that IAC motor. Um, they do make blue green PCMs with them. I went to the junkyard, I don't know how many times, and they said they had a car because primarily they came like in work trucks and in the Savannah box trucks, stuff like that. Every single time I would go out there and the PCM was missing. So it kind of became clear that I would have to switch to this guy. This is a 0411. Um, this is a very old PCM, so it has half the RAM of this guy, but it has the IAC drivers, and you can also run E85 on this guy. But uh, the reason why I actually didn't end up going with it is because just like the harness, I got this Holley Terminator for like next to nothing. Um, some dude locally upgraded to a Holley Dominator. This is just a Terminator X. It's not an X Max, which means this does not do transmission control. So if you are interested in doing like a 4L60, 4L80, or even this guy, uh, 8HP. Actually, I don't know if these guys can do a 8HP, but th this in any world cannot control an automatic transmission. For one, there was not really a huge demand when this guy listed it because everybody wants to put a 4L80 behind their LS. Um, so I bought it for him for $400, which is kind of crazy because the Holley Terminator costs like $1,300 right now. Um, but to get it all wired in, that was C101 connector that I showed you. So I went through that whole C101 connector, um, like I said, before I started the YouTube channel and mapped out what each and every one of these wires does so that when it comes time to merge it into the Holley Terminator, we will have a actual waterproof, um, I'm not gonna say motorsports grade, but OEM grade connector where we can just plug into the um, X11, I think is what it's called on the car side. And then this side is called the C101. And it should, in theory, give us all of the inputs and outputs on the dashboard. All right, so this is the wiring harness for the Holley Terminator. Um, I got mine used, as you can see, it's still brand new in the package. Um, I feel like if there was a section on Facebook Marketplace called, I changed my mind, that's where you need to shop. So somebody bought this harness brand new and then changed their mind and went with a stock ECU and stock harness. So I picked this harness up from them for like $100 or something. This is a good start to be able to start figuring out where all of this wiring is going to live. ground hole, I know. So like, I'm gonna pack it in cause like I'm tired of being in 90 degree weather out here in the garage and being bit, that's just, that's just miserable. But what I, I will say before I go is um, I'm going to try to start live streaming when I'm fixing stuff or doing mods on the car. Um, and then once the live stream's done, it's gonna go into members only. So really the, only the members will be able to review the full live stream. But that doesn't mean you guys won't get to see it because at the same time I'm doing the live stream up here, 
I'm doing the GoPro footage here. So, and this will turn into like an edited video, like the 10 minute video that you usually see with me working on the cars and whatnot and all that type of stuff. I'm not gonna commit to a schedule because um, my life is always an evolving, some type of natural disaster. Ladies and gentlemen, the smoke and the flame now, and the famous crashing to the ground, not quite to the boring mass of the humanity at all. So um, when I'm live, I'm live. Uh, I may sit, put something on Discord. So if you're a channel member, like you probably will get a heads up that I'm gonna be live. But like I said, nobody's getting cut out of content because um, the important things will be in the, uh, in the edited video that comes out afterwards. And so um, I think that's pretty much it. So, um, oh my God. So um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just still think it's crazy that nobody makes a, a adapter kit or a swap kit for this application.